It's Thursday, June 23rd. I'm Rim. I'm Scott. And this is Geek Nights. Tonight, how to not suck. We're bringing it back at hosting a party. Let's do this. Man, that's the kind of topic we'd have done back in like 2006, 2007. We used to host a lot of parties and stuff back then. Like, actually, kind of way more than we do now. Mm. But also, it's interesting that we uh, we were trying to think of what to do the show today, and we have forgot that we had that ongoing series, How to Not Suck at Something, that seemed pretty popular back then. Like, and we just kind of stopped doing it. I don't know why. Like, I don't think we ran out of ideas. I don't know why we stopped. Mm. So I think we're going to start How to Not Suck at doing episodes on How to Not Suck at Things. Mm. And there's, you got any. Any meta, any things to talk about in the beginning of the show? Thursday, the lounge? <laughs> now that you're done talking about nothing. Uh, I got some some things. You want a thing? So my pebble broke, and I'm getting a replacement. Uh, yeah, I've had that happen. So the pebble... I had the very first pebble ever, and the screen just like flipped the fuck out, and then they sent me a new one eventually. So the pebble, I have the pebble they steel series. They didn't even series. want the old one back. I have the pebble time steel series. They're making me send it back, mm. but... I have had it for a long time, and it's waterproof, and they make a big deal on the website. They are like, wear it at the beach, wear it in the pool, wear it. It is 100% waterproof, 30 meters down, go nuts. Mm -hmm. So we were at the beach, and I had it on, and I jump into the water, and the screen immediately goes apeshit, and it dies. I guess it wasn't water. <laughs> so, like, li- I, I, like, literally, like, it starts buzzing constantly, and I look, and the buzzer is, like, squirting water out the top of it. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just like, really? <laughs> like, didn't even pretend to be waterproof? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I did do the warranty thing, and they respond back, and they're like, so before we're going to accept the warranty, you need to take a video of you attempting to charge it and trying to turn it on and proving that it won't turn on. And I was like, okay. I made this video of, like, it not turning on, (laughs) and I sent it to them, and then they're like, okay, we'll give you a new one. (laughs) Okay. But then they asked me something interesting, Mm. and this is actually, I don't know if you're aware of this extreme design flaw of the pebble, which is not relevant to what happened to me, because I can see the top seal here, which is not sealed. Like, you can see it's not sealed. Okay. But if the pebble's in water, and you push any of the buttons, immediate ruin. The buttons are not waterproof if you press them. That's something that they bury and hide, but that is an explicit design flaw of all the pebbles. So if you push the button in the water... Fucked. Just ruins it. And they won't give you... If you do that... I don't know if they will or not, but (laughs) in my case, I can clearly see that that is not what happened, so I don't have to worry about that. Like, if I push on it, even opens... Yeah, I'm not planning to go swimming anyway. Yeah, but uh, that was an interesting thing that happened to me at the beach. Because it starts buzzing. I'm like, who's calling? me while I'm in the water. I'm like, oh, Pebble Warranty is calling me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. News time? I guess. A big news happened. Well, you were the one who was bitching for like 10 minutes about how there's no news at all in the world right now. I found a news. All right, what's your Super news? important news. How important could this be? The National Hockey League is oh. going to officially and definitely oh. create oh. yet another hockey team in the city of Las Vegas, Nevada. This is a done deal. Now what sucks is that this team should be called the Stars, but that name is already taken. Okay, so first of all, right, issue the first. We need less hockey teams, not more hockey teams. Yes. Issue the second. They could have just moved the Arizona team to Las Vegas. Yep. <laughs> issue number three. Sad. We just need less hockey teams. They sh- what they really should do is get rid of the <laughs> Arizona team and probably a few others. Now, I'm actually, like, I, while I kind of want there to be less hockey teams, I feel like we're at a pretty good level. Like, if we didn't expand, I feel like this is sustainable. <laughs> anyway, uh, another issue that requires least some amount of discussion, uh, right? No one lives in Vegas who cares about hockey? No. There is going to be an expansion draft, which basically means each team... I'm not going to go over the specific rules. You oh, could, yeah. I've never... You can, I've never paid it. Like, expansion drafts are not common. You can you can read the specific rules for the expansion draft online, but basically the deal is each team can protect a certain number of players from its team. So basically you're like, if you're, you know, the Rangers, you're saying, you can't have our Lundqvist. He's ours. Don't touch this. Yep. Right? And then there are certain players that have, like, no move clauses or no trade clauses in their contracts, and those players you have to protect. Like, you, you can't decide. You have to spend one of your protections on them because you're forced to because you made that contract. So what but, if... And then... What if you had uh, all your contracts had no move somehow? 
and you've only got end protection. I think there's there's all kinds of rules. Yeah, the NHL definitely. But has basically, a rule then like, the, ex- well, the expansion team can go around and they st- just take players from everyone to make their own team. Yeah, and that's how that works. And then you have to fill in your slots with AHL people. So imagine this: you're gonna have a team now that is a whole bunch of people who have fought with each other in the past. Some of them probably hate each other. I mean, that's no different than any other trade deal. Uh, the the difference is in a trade, you get like one player in exchange for a player. This is a team composed of nothing but those people. Anyway, so then uh, all these people have to go to Las Vegas to play hockey, right? So the yeah. deal, the, the big deal is the gambling situation, right? So that's the whole reason you choose Vegas, because Vegas uh, is... is uh, the... Actually, I don't think that's the reason you choose Vegas. I've Why been reading not? a lot about this. So Vegas... It's a big city with no sports teams, no professional sports teams. Gambling in Vegas has been on a steep decline for a decade. That is true. But... Sports gambling in general is on the rise. The that only, is also true. It is the only kind of gambling that fucking matters anymore that anyone cares about. Now there is a side and- angle here. Vegas, the way they make money now is hospitality and spectacles. Mm-hmm. And hockey in Vegas is actually perfect for a spectacle. There's a whole bunch of games there. So if you're suddenly in- all these real hockey teams have to go there. Yep. Like so you're now- gonna have away games in fucking. So Vegas. think of this: if the Rangers are in Vegas for a game. I guarantee one, there's at once least. a year at most because it's the West versus the East. Uh, is it once or is it twice? It might be. Twice. I mean, I think yeah, it's twice. twice. Yeah, Vegas will come to the Garden. Oh, and no, yeah. one, no one will go to see it. You get cheap tickets. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> you can't get cheap. It doesn't. I don't care if it's the Sabers. You still can't get a cheap Rangers ticket. Sabers are better than Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> but so if if the Rangers are in Vegas for their game there. I guarantee there's at least a couple thousand Rangers fans oh, yeah, who yeah. happen to be in Vegas at the time. The who tickets say, in Vegas will be way cheap. Yeah, but they'll be like, oh. You can go to Vegas in the winter, which is a place you want to go in the winter, and see cheap hockey. I also think, and in then general, you they can, can sell these have, tickets. They'll have gambling machines at the hockey arena, just like they did in Australia at the footy field. Yeah, but anytime there's a game in Vegas, they're just going to be Who's like... Who's going to score a goal first? Who's going to score the most like, hey, goals? Which player is going to score first? But hey, tourist, you want to see Penn and Teller? You want to see who's ice gonna hockey? Ser- who's going to serve the most penalty minutes? I, so I think that the audience mm. of the Vegas Stars is going to be... Like, any given game is going to be the like... The Vegas not stars. Yeah, I'm just calling them <laughs> the Vegas Stars for <laughs> now. Emily thinks they should be called the Aces. Uh, I don't know. That's not bad. I want to call them the Mavericks. <laughs> <laughs> There's already a Dallas Mavericks in basketball. <laughs> well, basketball, not the same. <laughs> what? What? Uh, the only team that there I, I know of that I can think of right now, where the same name is in two different leagues, is not the, counting minor league, the Cardinals. They're the St. Louis Cardinals of yep. baseball and the Arizona Cardinals of. Uh, football. That is true. I can't think of any more unless you count minor leagues. Um, and that doesn't count because there's a million stupid teams. Giants. Down the, there. the San Francisco Giants and the New York Football Giants. I did not know there was the, a San Francisco Giants. They're the baseball team. And then they used they won the World Series recently. I guess they're, I they're that's how little I pay good. attention to baseball. There's also used to be the New York Giants of baseball that no longer exist. Let's bring them back. Mm-hmm. I think instead of expanding in Vegas. Someone's going to tell me that there's another one that I forgot. There should be. We should just expand into Bronx or Queens. <laughs> Does have a third hockey team here? <laughs> no, the Islanders are already garbage. You don't need... <laughs> yeah, but at least there's more... It just spreads a little bit of hockey out. Because the Rangers, you just can't see unless you got an inside line. But... There's There's the Texas Rangers and the New York Rangers. But this audience is going to be like a third. (laughs) The people in Vegas who decide they they care about hockey and that's going to be their team. It's going to be a third. Tourists who've never seen ice hockey before who are like, yeah, I'll see an ice hockey game. It's part of my Vegas thing. Whatever. Cool. It's a spectacle. I'll go watch this thing. And the last third will be fans of whatever the other team is who happen to be in Vegas. Mm. We'll see how this all goes. I don't predict they'll win a Stanley Cup in my lifetime. Uh, you know that's the main. That's the last point, right? Is like they're now. We really can't have Vegas with the name on the Stanley nope, Cup. That the, can't happen. The, we're like it cannot be allowed. But it, it's possible. <laughs> and what are you gonna do if it happens? Just no, be like I feel like up. old enemies, like the Rangers and Islanders, will somehow collaborate to prevent Vegas from getting it. Right. And but you know, hey, if I go to Vegas in the winter, which is a, I'm most likely to go in the winter, I'll go see a hockey game for cheap. Yeah, no, I would see tickets readily available. Uh. You know what? Even if it was like Sabres and the Vegas Mavericks, <laughs> I would probably go see it because it's Vegas. What else are going to do? You're going to see Penn and Teller. You're going to eat a bunch of fancy food. Mm-hmm. You're going to wander around. Watch a fountain do a thing. Mm. Have you been to Vegas in your adult life? Nope. Have you been to Vegas ever? Nope. Oh. It, uh, I think I talked about this a long time ago, but the way I, it, it's way more fun and nicer than I expected, but also like 80% exactly what I expected. 
Like, I'm oh, not there's s- the Florida Panthers of hockey and the Carolina Panthers of the NFL. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think of them. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> so other minor news is, uh, this is more video game news, but it's kind of relevant to real life. Because if, even if you're not like someone who would self-describe as a video gamer, and I'm not, I don't even know if this game is good because I haven't actually played it except a demo. But this game, Valhalla, the, the NFL, uh, New York Jets, and the Winnipeg Jets. <laughs> the Winnipeg Jets. <laughs> Feel bad for the Winnipeg Jets. <laughs> Do they still exist? <laughs> <laughs> They're playing the Hartford Whalers down in hell. <laughs> right. So. VA-11 HALL A. Mm-hmm. It's this video game that we've been waiting for for years. Based solely on having played a like two minute demo of it and then being see- told what it is, and it's basically a papers please style game coupled with a visual novel set in a cyber dystopia that is so close to the Idoru world that I, I'm kind of like it's, shocked. It's pixel anime style. And but as far as I can tell from the you know information I have gathered, the part where you make the drinks, it, it, papers please actually has like a skill like clicking fast and all this right. Yep. This doesn't have that. It's you know it's basically it's more like Phoenix Wright. Like it's just a visual novel mostly. Yeah, but based on the drinks you make for people and how you interact with them, like stuff will go differently. And I can't say the game's good because we haven't played it. But I've been waiting for this game for a long time. I installed it, it the day it came out because I pre-ordered it, but I just haven't had time to play it because it's summer and I'm outside all the time. It looks like the kind of game that I'm gonna really, 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 really like. Yeah, I'm gonna and try to. I'm gonna stream it with my new equips. And it's weird and different enough to where even if you don't think you like video games, this is the kind of thing that you should try. It might broaden your horizons on what it means to say this is a video game. Mm. Uh, even if the game's bad, it'll at least be interesting, and I suspect it's not going to be bad. No. Uh, other interesting stuff that's been going on. So Scott said there's no news, but literally right now, Britain is having a referendum on whether or not they're going to leave the European Union. Don't care. You don't care at next, all? Next, next news. Do you, need, do you even know like what that entails or what that means? What is the European Union, Scott? Don't care, next. Okay, really? So you have no... This. Okay. <laughs> This is why Scott doesn't ever think there's any news. There's nothing to say about this. Who there's cares? a lot to say about that. <laughs> there's nothing to need to say that hasn't already been said. Continue. Uh, by that logic, no one should ever make any more media because every concept has ever ever been expressed at some point in some form. You're just rewriting. I the don't same watch two a lot stories. of new media. <laughs> yeah, old man Scott. <laughs> But anyway, things of the day. I stumbled onto these videos, and they're actually pretty pleasant. They're called, like, Oddly Satisfying. And it's just a series. It's kind of like Gifts with Sound, but longer form. But it'll show, like, just a machine making cakes in close-up detail. Or, like, this one right here. A guy has set up, like, 40 balls all over a a pool table. And then he throws one ball with his hand, and it bounces around like crazy and doesn't hit any of them. And all these just, like, really satisfying videos to watch, like a master this chef. This has been around for a while. Yeah, it's just a thing. It's one of those YouTube ghettos. It's good stuff. I mean, this has been a thing, like, this is even older than YouTube, right? This kind of stuff. Like, oh, yeah. I remember, like, even in high school, seeing, like, JPEGs or, like, animated GIFs of, like, stuff that was, like, whoa. Yeah, it was animated GIFs. I think we call, I, I used to see it was uh, gear porn because it was just complex gears yeah, doing awesome things. Okay, and it, it was all, it was called, even back then it was called oddly satisfying. But that's so. not my thing of the day. This is just oh. a, my thing of the day is that someone did something brilliant and this is the ki- this is like this is the most beautiful troll in the world because it's creative and interesting mm. they call it the most unsatisfying and oh, it's, it's those things like an OCD person goes insane. It's things that just don't work out. Yeah, like, I've like seen these it's too. It's slinky starts to go and then it just tangles I think up I, and falls I, I've over. I've seen this exact one, I think. A guy's about to catch his finger in a mousetrap in slow motion and just before it snaps, the gif ends. Mm-hmm. Uh, someone slowly failing at Tetris. Two tourists throwing a frisbee the wrong way over and over and over again. Clearly not understanding. This is the museum exhibit I wanted to make. The guy play, sitting there playing Mario badly. Yeah. And you can't stop him. He's just doing it. Yeah. Just keeps touching that first Goomba or whatever over and over. It's falling in a <laughs> hole. Over, you know, sometimes I guess he can get to the first hole and fall in. That's Occasionally not... has to get to the first hole and then fall in. Like, he gets a little bit further. You're like, maybe he's got it. Yeah, so he's not improving, right? It's some some performer, some performance art, right? They're not improving. They just keep sucking and not getting anywhere significant. One of these is just Mario, like, trying to jump up onto a thing and just failing forever. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. That's what I'm talking about. So what do you got? Uh, so... Uh, I th- 
I felt like I used this as a thing of the day, but I guess I didn't. So I what, couldn't find it in a search. So if right. this is a duplicate, it's my So here's fault. a bunch of old, awesome... Yeah, it's Rim's fault. It's a bunch of awesome old woodblock prints, which are my favorite, you know, old Japanese artworks. And all of these artworks have something in common. They depict people flipping over go boards, as in, like, when you flip the table because you're pissed, you lost risk and shit, right? <laughs> they just go was the game they played, so that's the thing they're flipping. I'm sure they would be flipping other... There might be a shogi board in here somewhere. No, it looks like all go boards. <laughs> but it tells you <laughs> flipping the table is not something new. It is a century old, <laughs> multi century old uh, behavior, right? And uh, it's kind of cool to see, you know, someone in ancient times exhibiting a behavior of the modern times. Yep. Because uh, humans have not changed substantially in terms of our brains for like 40,000 years. So even though society is advanced in all that time, uh, we haven't so much physically. So the same but clever worked, trolley right. bullshit that we do now, right. you know, some go master would do and troll the other guy a right. hundred or a thousand, well, not right. a thousand. What I wonder ago. though is like, how come there aren't like depictions of like, you know, dudes flipping over chess tables of like, you know, some like European arts. I've never seen that. Maybe were they there less, are. Were they less angry? One, maybe there are, but two, woodblocks were kind of a pop art thing. That's true. So you would, would, yeah, that's not the kind of thing you would paint. You would, you know, if you were someone's, pa- you know, patroned by somebody. Yeah, well, you saw that thing. I was going to use the thing today later. It's an explanation of why in medieval art, babies look like frumpy old men, and then suddenly in the Renaissance, babies look good. <laughs> it's not because people couldn't draw babies. They drew them ugly on purpose because of all these stupid societal reasons. Mm. I'll use that as my thing of the day I don't know. Week. I'm curious what those societal reasons it's are. It's a real good video. I can just go to the museum and find out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in the meta moment, uh, Kineticon is July 7th, 8th. Well, it's 8th, 9th, and 10th. You can pick up your badge on the 7th. I don't know if there's anything on the seventh. We're not responsible. They for like to advertise that it's on the seventh, and they'll put like. La- I mean, last year they had like the meager amount of late programming or something on the seventh, so just what, to be able to say that it was four days. No, what was interesting? Like we were shocked. We scheduled like four panels, like Thursday afternoon and evening. There was a surprising number of people who showed up. By surprising, panels. we mean five. <laughs> no, uh, like 40 or 50. I didn't see that many. Yeah, you did. You were there. We counted them together. We remarked on how crazy it was that there were so many people. I even have the spreadsheet with the numbers and our notes. Those are Don't sad. fuck with me. Those are some sad people. <laughs> <laughs> you were off by a full order of magnitude. Also, a lot of those people weren't people. They're so sad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, goalpost mover. We did one of those panels. I thought we bailed on it. No, we did it. I don't remember this. We no. I remember being in this room and there were a few people and I was like, "Holy fuck! Why is anyone here? Did everyone leave?" Jesus. Yeah, a Christ. few people. There were like forty people. Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> don't go to a convention on Thursday. It's not like it's pegs. Connecticut's pretty fun. The schedule's mostly up, mostly up online. The font for the schedule, I got none to do with. Do <laughs> not come to me with that. That is. Outside of my control on this convention, all I do is schedule all the panels. Mm. I do not do anything else. <laughs> so if you have any complaint about anything at Kineticon that is not, why didn't you schedule a panel on X? Uh, go and to someone an- else. The answer to that is because it sucked? <laughs> no, the answer to that is because no one submitted anything. Also? Like, kind of interesting. No one submitted anything related to ponies, like at all. Like that's gone. Po- I think I haven't even watched the newest season of ponies at all. I watched a couple episodes. It's going. It's steady state. Mm. Entertaining, but... Uh, not as good as continuing Adventure Time. I also got it. When what's the newest Adventure Time? There's been a bunch. Uh, shit's gone. Do, do you know what happened to Finn's sword? The Finn sword? Uh, maybe. The one that is Finn. I remember seeing something happen to it. Something happened to it. I don't know how new that is though. Did something else happen? All right. Uh, did anything happen with the crown? Did anyone go inside the crown? Inside of it. Yeah, What's your way, name stole it. Yeah, you're way behind on Adventure Time. All right. It was Adventure Time. You know, I like Steven Universe, but Adventure Time has gone on so much longer and is still like the freshest show. Like it just never gets stale. And I'm curious if they're going to keep that up. Mm. But yeah, pony stuff not represented. O- people only submitted Undertale because I asked them to. Uh, there was like two people submitted Doctor Who things. Uh there was still a, a Hitalia Aska Nation, but only one. Like, the, the Hitalia stuff mostly disappeared. There was a ton of Homestuck submissions still, but they were all Aska Homestuck. Literally, not one of them looked like it was actually a panel. Mm-hmm. And otherwise, 
most of the submissions that I got, because remember, while it's a pretty big con, it's a generic con. Like, it's one of the few cons that is all the stuff and is pretty big. Um, I'd say it was about a third anime submissions, and almost everything else was gaming related. Mm. Like, gaming is the primary thing anyone submits panels for now, other than cosplay. And I suspect that's because gaming cons traditionally didn't have a lot of panels. And PAX sort of changed that, and now there's a lot of gaming panels. Uh, so, I mean, people also, everyone plays games, right? Yep. It's like the universal nerdery. But, like, for whatever reason, gaming culture has a big panel-making component that is second only to the anime culture, but the anime fans have a lot more anime cons that are less professional or lower level enough to accept their, like, I, I'm a punk kid wanting to do a panel. There aren't as many gaming cons that'll accept the punk kid who wants to do a panel. So as a result, all those gaming panels that are, like, mid-tier are ending up at conventions like Kineticon, which is interesting. A lot of them look pretty good, actually, but I think more panels were submitted about gaming than any other topic. Mm. And of those, I think it was a 50-50 split between tabletop and video. Mm. Otherwise, the book club book will be Margaret Atwood's Oryx and Crake. Going to read it soon. I am in the last hundred pages of the Wheel of Time. Uh, Andral busted out. He did the thing, and it was pretty good. Mm, I don't know who that is. I know you don't know who that is. <laughs> do, do, you, do you remember anyone from the Wheel of Time? Ran. Ran Del Tor. Anyone else? Luz Theron. All right, all right. That's still only one person. Dark so. one. <laughs> uh, who is the dark one? What is the dark one? What's the dark one's name? Dark one? Nah. Shaitan. Oh, you know, right. Satan. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, that was the girl who is basically the like ridiculously powerful and trying to hit on Ran and uh, Lanfear. Yeah, that one. Wow, you skipped a lot there. Didn't even bring up like Perrin or Tam Althor or Tom <laughs> Marilyn or anything. Well, I'm just talking about the cool characters. I don't know what the... well, Tom's not cool. He's all right. He's like the best. He's he's a well. I mean, you love the Spoonie Bard. That's, he's an that's, angry old Spoonie Bard. That's he's like, a, that's a, he's like a retired Spoonie Bard. Yeah, I'm not. I'm more into the you know the uh, loose Theron types. Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> the loose Theron stuff's pretty good later on. I like. I but like, yeah, you know. I'm done with that crap <laughs> real soon, and then we're gonna read uh, Oryx and Crake. Uh, actually, my favorite my favorite dude was the the ancient king of Manatharian. That's my guy. Oh yeah, I think part of his brain is inside of Matt. Yeah. 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 Shit went down. Yeah. <laughs> um. Otherwise, the Patreon's going strong. Uh, people are like, people seem to really dig it and post no. a lot of stuff in there. Make it weaker. Weaken it. Uh, I'm working on the chicken surprise shirts. Sometime th- by the end of the summer, that's gonna happen. It's looking pretty good. I'll wear one. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna. Well, well uh, I'm gonna get them for the people who want them first, <laughs> and then I'm gonna try to get a, li- a legit licensing agreement with the game designer. And be like, look, do you remember this game you made? Can 19. I sell chicken surprise shirts? <laughs> officially <laughs> because i think i think i could sell dozens of them maybe <laughs> total so yeah bringing it back how to not suck we used to give a lot more advice on geek nights and we kind of stopped over the years and you know what our advice then is probably bad advice compared to now because we're older and smarter now so what i would actually you get like- smarter when you're older right that's not i mean when i was younger i said old people were dumb and i still say that but I, whatever age i am is the age when people are the smartest <laughs> you know what it is you don't get smarter in fact you kind of objectively get dumber, but you get wiser. Or at least you should get wiser. A lot of people don't get wiser. You can tell those people when once they hit their 30s, suddenly they stop upgrading all their shit. Like, whatever phone they used when they hit 30, they just use that kind of phone forever. Like, why should I upgrade? Why would I care? (laughs) Like, if a new website comes out, like a new social media thing, after they turn 30, they will never use it. Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm not using the Snapchats. <laughs> I'm not using the Snapchats either. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Everyone who uses the Snapchat is some dumbass kid who doesn't know better. <laughs> but what I'd kind of like to do is we should take one of those old How to Not Suck episodes, do that topic again now, and then just post both episodes side by side, and there will be objective evidence of whether or not we were dumber back then or dumb now. I mean, we're going to agree more with whatever we say now, no matter what. Yeah, but other people will see the two. Like, if we give completely different advice on, like, how to get a job 10 years ago versus now, that would be very interesting. Mm. But we have to make sure we don't ever go back and listen to those episodes or we taint it. That's definitely not a concern. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got to listen to those beta episodes. I'm remastering the third one right now. Holy it's not hell. my concern. Holy hell. <laughs> Guys, at least we're going to get the Radio mi- sh- uh, Shack microphone soon. It'll get a little easier. <laughs> so, uh... How to announce like it what? Uh, throwing a party, hosting guests, all that nonsense. 
we see, like, I don't go to as many parties or gatherings as I used to because college, like, very different situation. But I see time and time again the same mistakes, the same problems. A lot of people really suck at inviting groups of people into their house Mm -hmm. to have a party, let alone suck at, like, hey, let's have a holiday party. Let's have, like, a a party around a specific event. Yeah, so many, I mean, there's so much differences that go on based on the level of party and what kind of party, but I guess start at the beginning with that invite part, right? Yep. So how do you invite people, right? So obviously if it's a fancier party, you got to mail the invitations. And if it's less than that, you can just email people or whatever, or call them individually or something. So something interesting. Or ask for, them individually in person. For an invite party, like a wedding in particular, culture says you have to send like a save the date, and then you have to like mail people these RSVP things. Mm-hmm. Practice shows that nobody under the age of like 35 will ever send that envelope back, and you just call them all anyway and be like, you're coming to my wedding, right? I'll send the envelope back. I, d- I don't think I've ever sent one of those envelopes back. You're the bad person then. Yeah, I am. I always send the envelope back, and you're an you're asshole if you don't. I think most people. Everyone sends it back except you. You're nah, just. <laughs> you're, I, you're the one. You you think like, oh, no one sends these back. No, you're the fucking asshole who doesn't send it back. Certain unnamed people who had weddings in the last ten years confided in me that something like a third or more of people did not send the envelope back. Mm. Like it's not just me who doesn't send the envelope back. Still, send the fucking envelope back. But also, ba- the main thing with the invitation, right, is you. there's two concerns no matter what party it is, right? Concern number one, who to invite. You need to prioritize the people. Not you know, Don't invite people who don't mix well, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? Don't invite the people you don't like, yep. but make sure they don't find out the party's happening. Wait, wait, hot take. Any any party, any gathering that has any invitation process more formal than, hey, you want to come to my place on this date? You're almost definitely doing it that way because you are inviting people you don't actually want to be there. Yeah, pretty much. Because it's always a wedding, right. a funeral, a uh, You don't send out mitzvah. written invitations for a funeral. You, send, you, you tell people when the funeral is. The, the day after they die? Uh, you're Jewish. Most people don't do it that way. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> so, um, right, so the other concern with the invitations is the main purpose of the invitation is not what you think it is, which is let the person know you want them to come. It's to remind them of when it fucking is because they're going to be like, oh, right, there was that party today, and everyone's partying and the person's not there. Yep. Right? You need to somehow... No, you're getting married today. My you, bad. Right, you need to get... If you, you want this person to come, they want to come, but they will fail to come even if they usually have their shit together unless you make sure that the thing is on their calendar and on their schedule and they remember to come. Like, I'm... But, like I have like my whole calendar and all shit in order all the time. Like I'm super good about that. But if you don't, if you invite me to a thing and like I don't remember, if it's not on my calendar, like there have been times where it's like, oh shit, that's this weekend. Oh snap. Now this is more. This is separate advice. This is more advice of how to live your life. Uh, you probably have a Gmail account. Use the fucking calendar. <laughs> yeah. Like, know when stuff is. <laughs> but if you're hosting a party, like, this might sound dumb. You might feel like, isn't that like a... W-? No, if you are going to do something, literally send your friends a calendar invite. Yeah, do some. Make sure, you know, you, you basically your goal is to make sure that the people mark it off on their schedule and remember to come. Right? Yep. You got to give them the date, the location, the time, all that stuff. Now, actually, I think... The other and primary also, reason, right? Well, there's another one more thing. Which the is other the reason, is if you are send, if you are formally inviting people to a thing, then it's sort of like saying, "This is my thing. I am responsible. It is a party, as opposed to people are coming over." Which means you've got to feed them. You got to know how many people are showing up. Well, no, I mean the one other aspect of the invitation, which is sort of like the addendum to the invitation, is you have to let people know what to expect. Right? Yep. It's like. You know, you are going to have to get a hotel. You know, you are going to have to wear black tie. You are are going going to have to to bring food. You will not have to bring food. You'll have to bring fucking money. Yeah, we are going to go to this beach. Bring a bathing suit. Bring a towel. Do not come. Bring a gun. You know, whatever you need. (laughs) Let the people know what they're going to need. Otherwise, people show up and they're like, I didn't bring any board games. No one has a spot in here. What the fuck? Yep. It implies that there is structure to your event. Now, unstructured events are possible, but that's a whole separate kind of party. We'll talk about that later. Mm-hmm. Talk about structured parties here. Mm-hmm. So At least the, moderate amount of structure. Yeah. Like, if you, if you send someone an invitation, that's probably a party where they expect when they show up, there's going to be, like, snacks and drinks and stuff, and at some point, dinner will appear. Uh, 
if you invite people semi-formally to a thing, like if you're the kind of person who doesn't normally do big social things, and you don't e- make it very clear, like, I'm not feeding you, I guarantee your friends might not complain to your face. Why didn't you feed me? But they're pissed. Yeah, I mean... They, they, they're mad that you didn't feed them. They expected you to feed them. Yeah, they and, traveled, right? They're in your house or whatever, or at your venue... And they're there during dinner time and they're partying. So they're not expecting to leave the party and get food or call for their own delivery. And then so if there's no dinner, <laughs> it's yep. like we're all hungry. And now because we're hungry, we're hangry. Yep. <laughs> and uh, even worse, if like if you're a host, like you're hosting the party, uh, you're going to have less fun than everyone else because you got to do all that sort of host stuff. So like it sounds like kind of minor advice, but for real, when people come over in this sort of thing, after they've been in your house for a couple minutes, you should ask them. Would you like anything to drink? Would you would you like a snack? Would you like some food? Or have it all out somewhere where it's very obvious that, hey, take one of these things if you're hungry or thirsty. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, your friends are sitting around in your house thinking to themselves, man, I'm really thirsty. Uh, should I ask him for a drink? Can I just open his fridge? I don't know. I just open people's fridges. I, I usually do too. don't have that feeling. So let's I get into that. Like, I see other people do have that. And, but like, I'll, you know, sometimes I remember to ask them, but you about half the time I don't, because if, if I'm in someone's house, I'll just go and I'll just, if I need water, I just go and start looking for cups and getting water. You know, it's like, I don't. Well, that brings up a very important point because there's, there are two very, very different kinds of parties. Cause what we've been talking about to this point is how a typical person throws a party who doesn't on a regular basis have their friends staying at their house. Mm. The kinds of parties we throw almost exclusively are, Hey, all our friends come to our house this weekend. Everyone's gonna sleep on the floor in like sleeping bags and pajamas, and like you're just in my house. Like take every take everyone assume take whatever you want from the fridge. Like we're all real close friends and family. Like no, there is no formality to it in that degree. Like if I show up at one of our friends' houses, I probably just go straight into their kitchen and take something out of their fridge. <laughs> <laughs> and I, if they someone goes in my fridge, I don't care as long as they don't mess it up. And if you don't throw parties like that at a regular basis, or at least a semi-regular basis, or at least go to parties like that, I think you need to make closer friends before you hit your 30s, or you're going to be in for a rude awakening of not having a lot to do and going to very boring, stilted parties among a bunch of adults who aren't really close friends anymore, sitting around a table that has a bunch of like bags of chips open that and people then, are picking at. And then everyone has to go home late, because yep. no one's sleeping there. Yep. Uh, so yeah, really just, uh, I guess this all comes down to, you have to set the expectations for what the party is. If you have a close friend group, that's probably implicit. If you don't have a close friend group, you've got to give a fucking timeline of like at four o'clock, the catering is going to arrive. Mm -hmm. Uh, bring like you bring beer, you bring snacks, you don't bring anything because you always bring garbage (laughs) and very specifically tell your friends Unless you told them to bring something, do not bring anything. Your friends are going to bring the worst snacks, the cheapest, crappiest bags of chips that they literally bought at a bodega on their way to your house. Mm -hmm. They're going to bring a six-pack of beer that you will never drink, Mm -hmm. that you do not want. Do you know how many bottles of awful liquor I have that I either threw away or gave away to someone because someone unnamed literally just brought it to our house and put it on the table at a party? People always bring some nasty chip that's the kind that I don't eat. Yep, it's like Tostitos covered in schmutz yeah. of some kind. Like, nope, I don't eat that. And then no one eats it, and then it's there. Yep. And then everyone leaves, and it's still there, because they don't want to take that shit home. Like, we had a big party at that Waterfall House upstate, and even though our friends were very organized, like, we had a spreadsheet. And again, oh, guys... that's I mean, there's a such thing as going too far. No, nah, well, I'm going <laughs> to get to that. If you have a gathering that's more than a few days, or is more than, like, ten people... You actually should plan it. Like, literally, I'm not joking, make a spreadsheet and organize shit like who's responsible for bringing stuff, if anyone is. Or pay money and just make all that go away. Yeah, I'm I'm usually a fan of the paying money, just sort of spontaneous. Like, what are we going to do for dinner tonight? All right, money, it happens. Yeah, you see, you are a fan of that, but at the same time, the only reason most of our big gatherings have gone smoothly is because someone else actually did plan all that. Because if you got 20 people and someone says, hey, let's order food, Uh, You know your friends, especially if this is a party where people who aren't close friends are. You know, like that guy you kind of know from work is going to be like, I don't want any pepperoni. And someone else is going to be like, I only eat pepperoni. Right. So you know what? I say, all right, us four are getting pizza. The rest of you, just do whatever you can do. Yeah, that's party goer (laughs) advice of bail on whatever the party's doing and defend for yourself. (laughs) 
Yeah. Like if I show up to a stranger party, I have a plan. I if have this is the Scott plans. party. It's everyone fend for yourself. The party, and, yep. and you know that in advance. But like if I go to someone else's party, I got I got bailout plans. Like if the party sucks, how do I make an excuse to get the fuck out of here? Uh, <laughs> if the party's boring, do I have a plan to make it not boring? If I don't, I have a plan to get the fuck out of there. <laughs> I have a plan to get food in case food is not at the party. Uh, I have a plan to call the police in case it's that kind of party. <laughs> you don't need a plan to call the police. You just do it. Like if you show up and oh oh party. No, uh, I meant posse. This Rim's, is a posse. Rim's driving up to your house, and he's like, okay, let me make a list of things that I'll do and that I'll call the cops for if I see yep. <laughs> There's not much on that list, but there are things on that list. <laughs> sure. The same things that are on the list all the time. But this was a big party that involved like multiple friend groups mashing together. And because we were staying in a remote place, ordering food was not an option. So we had to plan who was going to cook and what. We planned it real well. The problem is your friends are all morons. So even though there is a spreadsheet that was shared with everyone, and everyone has Google, you can log in, you can look at the spreadsheet, it says you bring this thing, and that is what you are supposed to bring. Do not bring more. You need to remind your stupid friends who are coming to your party on a daily basis not to bring shit, or they're going to bring shit. I think we had... You already talked about bringing shit. Four times the amount of food we needed, despite having the spreadsheet. Mm. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> so now, once you're at the party and everyone's brought their shit, you got to do stuff at the party. Yep. If you run a party, you are responsible for everyone's fun. Like, if you don't want to be responsible for that, you should not right. host a party. Like, people will just default to sit around, play video game, watch YouTube, play board game, poke their phone, do their own thing. Unless somebody, you know, organizes and says, all right, we are doing this thing. It is happening. So... You know, based on the scenario, you know, that might be someone else, but usually it's your party, you're running it, it, that's your responsibility for at least the major thing to be, you know, like maybe you're all going to go to a nearby fair, you know, it's like, okay, we're going to go at this time, here's how to get there, this is when we're going, we're going to be, you know. Yep. And it's, if you're going to, if you have any. And you got to be like, okay, you have to actually get up and be like, okay, people, let's go. So real talk time. Get out. If you're going to have a party that involves events or like significant activities, you can have one of those per day and one optional, less complicated thing. That is the absolute maximum. Yep. If you try to do more than that in a given day on a party or a weekend or anything, it is going to be disaster unless your job is literally make all this happen and you yourself have no fun. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, I cannot stress that enough. That is like the mistake everyone makes of, yeah, in the morning, let's all go get brunch together, which already, nope, you can't get a restaurant reservation right. for 20 people. Right. And now it's one o'clock. Then we're all going <laughs> to go to the haunted house at seven. So before we do that, let's go downtown and like wander around through all the shops. Uh, you go downtown, party- you're not going to make it to the haunted house by seven. Yep. Half your party is going to say, fuck it on the shops, go straight to the haunted house. The other half of your party is going to get lost downtown. You won't see him again until that night. Mm-hmm. Some people are going to say, wow, this is too complicated. Bail on everything. And it would just- be theoretically possible for one person to go to the shops, get in their car, go to the haunted house. All right. You know, but when you're with these, basically when you're with more people, Everything slows down and takes longer. For every four people you have in addition to yourself and your close, fast-walking, fast friends, assume that it'll take, like, 20% more time to do literally anything. Right, like, even, let's say it's me and Rim, right? And we're going to go see a movie, yep. right? So we separately take the subway, arrive at the movie on time, watch the movie, and then separately leave. That's basically instant speed. Yep, so now we're going to go. But now we got a different situation. Me and Rim are at a party, and me and Rim together with no one else are going to go to the movie, right? Both of us together is slower than both of us separate. Yep. That's just how it is. It won't be that much slower. It'll be still really fast because we're both really high speeds, but it'll still be slower. But like, right? all right, now we've got 12 people and we're going <laughs> to go to the shops before we go to the haunted house. Well, one, half the people don't just, actually want to go to the shops. That's also true. They're only going along to socialize and that's all they want. Yep. Uh, of the half who want to be at the shops, a few of them are going to spend way too much time in the shops and a few of them are going to want to go to different shops and split off. Mm-hmm. Getting the party back together will take like a half hour. Mm-hmm. And also, 
It does. It's not even just in the city. It's anywhere. The the every two or three or four people you add means another car in the suburbs, which means now there's six cars all driving to the place. Wait, now you have to spend even if you're gonna go somewhere, you lose ten minutes just discussing who's going in what car and which car is going where. And then oh, this these people need to go to the ATM, so that car is making a little you know detour. Yep. Oh, car oh. four is out of gas. That sucks. Now oh. they don't know how to get there. This car needs to go to a Wawa to get some snacks, and this car needs to do this. And uh, you know who's going in that. That one. Yep. You keep just you're not you're losing time constantly with every I mean hell person. remember way back we all a bunch of us all planned to go to an Oticon and we had like four cars. One of the cars refused to speed on the freeway. So they we lost them forever. Because mm-hmm. they would only go fifty five and everyone else they going got 80. there hours after us. Yeah, like three hours later. Yep. <laughs> so I and this is you might think, oh don't worry, I made some buffer time. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Almost everyone I know is terrible at this. It's just a human nature is to underestimate the pain in the ass of dealing with a few more people in your group. Mm-hmm. So, like, for every four people, assume an extra half hour buffer time, maybe, for everything. Which means, if you have any number of people, you cannot do more than one thing in a day, and that's it. Like, that's the golden rule. Yeah. Never deviate from that unless you are a professional. All right, so now... You know, your party's winding down. Yep. Got to get people to go home. You should either. Offer them tea. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like me to roll out the beds? Yes. <laughs> should I, shall I arrange a hotel room for the night? <laughs> shall I call into work for you? <laughs> Would you like to hand them a lease? <laughs> but a little, little Airbnb like on the laptop. It's real easy. If this is a formal party where there's people there who aren't close friends, uh, well in advance say this is when the party ends Mm -hmm. and wrap it up like don't try to be passive aggressive about it no one's smart enough to pick up on the social cues and more importantly the people who are overstaying their welcome they see the cues they're actively resisting because they're lonely Mm. like not even joking Mm -hmm. that guy you kind of know at work who's at your house and it's 11 and you really want the party to end he's hanging out because he's got nothing to do back home yeah, there needs to be some sort of clear ending time. Even if it's like a big fancy party with like a, a band and shit, right? It's like, they got to be like, okay, guys, you know, you play Let's Dance. Yep. The Last Dance. The it's final like, yeah, countdown, that's maybe. actually the last dance. That's why they have that song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it exists. Uh, like, you might think you can be clever and sort of socially finagle it. You're probably not clever enough to do that. So make sure there's a defined end. And if it's your actual friends, just be blunt. Just be like, guys, I gotta go to bed. Get the fuck out of my house. Yeah. And if you're the real, if they're real friends, they're totally okay with that. That is how I end almost every party. Guys, I'm going to fucking bed. It's like <laughs> 4 a.m. Jesus fuck, <laughs> go away. All right, I'm you guys do door. whatever. I'm going to bed. <laughs> yep. Either get out of my house, or if they're actually close friends, I'm going to bed. Just don't leave the door unlocked. <laughs> <laughs> if you, if your close friends are not that close, you need closer friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, in terms of food and like catering and all that, uh, if you're going to pay for catering, I kind of recommend you pay for catering. Don't think you can cook food for everybody. No. You probably can. There's a big difference between cooking a dinner for four or five people, cooking a dinner for your family where dinner's an hour late and that's just what happens, mm-hmm. and cooking dinner for a bunch of people. Or at a someone's party. been cooking that dinner all day for your family on Thanksgiving. Yep. You might have some friends who are like, we'll take care of dinner, which in our group is often the case. Like, there are certain of our yeah, group. Don't expect to play a board game with any of those people on that whole day. Yep. But they'll have fun. Like, they'll be in the kitchen, like, doing their, like, Oh, if someone, I hope if someone offers to cook that they like doing it. That would be weird if you said, I'll cook dinner. I hate fucking cooking. Jesus <laughs> I'm going to poison ad- you these, all. These assholes. I'm, they're all having fun and I'm cooking. It's like, I offered to cook. Why did I do that? Yep. <laughs> like, so pro tip. I'm complaining. I'm doing a thing that I volunteered to do. Here's the pro tip. If you're having a party where there's a grill and someone's going to be cooking meat, that's actually going to be a job all night. You're just going to be constantly cooking meat. Because the meat, you basically can't, if you have any significant number of people, unless you have a monstrous grill, or you, you cannot, ignore safety, you cannot grill faster than people can eat what you are grilling. Yep. Right. So this is where you cheat. This is like pro tip. You need to get like, you ever go to like one of those public barbecues and they have like tons of grills lined up and then you're still waiting for food. Yep. Right. It's like people can eat 
a burger way, way faster than it takes to cook one, and they want a second. Like at a Lauren Scojo party. Like someone I will actually come out want and one say, right now. Someone will come out <laughs> and be so like, hungry. hey, the burgers are done. And by the burgers, they mean literally as many burgers as could fit on that grill. They're gone before you can get upstairs to the grill. Right. So actually what I suggest doing, and some people might not like this, is you know, you like you have your grill, you grill some meats, people eat them. You grill some meats, people eat them. And people are eating like these waves, and actually it takes long to eat. Grill, and even though your grill is small, just put those meats to the side and don't let anyone fucking eat them, right? And then wait until you've grilled everything and then let people eat. And you say, won't those first burgers be cold? Maybe, but maybe you can heat them up too. Keep them in a warm place, like near the grill or in a warm oven that's like, you know, kind of, right? There's, I, I think there's I have strategies better... you can use to serve everyone at once. And then, because once you start serving food, everyone enters food mode, right? And they Because they're hangry because you didn't give them enough snacks. Right, so they can't really be enjoying themselves like playing a board game once food mode is activated, but only some of the people are eating, and now food mode is on for hours until the grill is finally empty. What you can do is you can let people keep enjoying themselves playing games and whatnot because they're not in food mode yet, and then you activate food mode and everyone eats simultaneously and finishes eating simultaneously. Like you ring a bell, soup's on, every pony, like, right. let's go. They finish eating and then they go cleaning and then back to enjoying. And if you provide <laughs> enough snacks... People won't be so hangry that they start freaking out about when's the burger going to be ready. Like right. they'll be like, "Oh, cool food," and they won't rush it. Right. So the final thing I just mentioned. Well, so I, I got the cleaning. Uh, everything you said there. I, there's a more pro move. I've seen Laura and Scojo like at their parties do this to a T. Mm. And some of you go to those parties and listen. You're gonna see what's happening. And if one of you was fooled by this, now you'll see through the gnosis. Mm -hmm. A lot of people who don't go to a lot of parties. Or who just, you know, for various reasons, they kind of want to, like, have something to do at the party. They want to be, like, the grill master. Because that feels like, when you were a kid, like, you see the dad cooking the grill, and you're like, man, I want to be that someday. The I reality is you do be not want to be that. No, you don't get to have any fun doing that. You want to go do something else. So, you provide snacks and all that, but then you'd be like, hey, who wants to man the grill? Mm -hmm. Who wants to run the grill? Not and me. get some other schmuck to run the grill and do the waves and leave them there for the rest of the night, <laughs> and there'll be a rotation of schmucks who will be making all the food at the grill, and you can just leave the grill alone. It'll take care of itself. If you invited schmucks, sure. Yeah, so, well, so at least cleaning the, is an they're issue. Mooks. They're they're t they're they're uh, they're marks. Right. That's what they are. Right. No matter how close a person is a friend to you, no matter how neat and tidy like their house is, right? They are gonna goth the fuck up out of your house. They're gonna break at least two glasses, no matter. They're gonna what. break your shit. They're gonna mess your shit up. So here's how to prevent them from messing up your shit. You know, maximally. You yep. can actually get things a little bit cleaner, right? So, so as an aside, make sure you cannot resent them. That's how parties go. Right. Rule number one, fuck the environment. Disposable everything. Yeah. Right? But you just don't want to fuck the environment completely. What we do, and it seems to work pretty well, is you. it works at PAX also. You have a plastic cup, and you write your name on it with a Sharpie. You put the Sharpies near the cups, more than one of them. And everyone writes their name on a cup with a Sharpie. And now, sure, someone might go for a second cup if they change beverages or something, but they're going to write their name on that too. And if you see cups around the house with names on them that haven't been reused or cleaned or disposed of properly, you know, who you can just it? call that fucking person out. Like, you know, Rim, you got this half drunken Dr. Pepper over here. What the <laughs> fuck? How long has this been here? An hour? And you like, uh, and you actually get, you know, and you call one person out and everyone else will get their shit in line. Right. Except I don't think they will because it, I take inventory. Because we because one thing, <laughs> if you have a dishwasher. That you, helps enormously. If you have a dishwasher, use real stuff for glasses and drinking. Maybe. But use plastic disposable for plates and things. Because you can wash a lot of glasses in a hurry in a dishwasher. As long as you turn on that mode that you never turn on. Depends on the number of people you got. Yeah, the heated dry. You got to turn that on. That's yeah, I don't key. like the heated dry. I'm always worried it'll melt like my plastic well, stuff. Well, yeah, you only use the heated dry if you're doing a party situation and you're just filling it with glassware constantly. Maybe. That's like the number one use case for heated dry. Anyway. But so your friends are going to leave so many half-drunk beverages around your apartment. Like you, I don't know why this happens. I don't know how, but... For, for every I mean, if I pour a beverage, I usually drink the whole thing and meet instantly, and then it's an empty cup that I have to carry around and like, fuck. I don't know why you even use cups. Because <laughs> how else do I go, you drink right out of the pitcher? Yeah, just drain it, just <laughs> chug it, and you're done. <laughs> but if you're going to serve alcohol, my advice to you is very specific. Either have bottles of beer and just leave it at that, or if there's going to be cocktails, do not let people make their own cocktails oh, from your liquor cabinet. <laughs> 
they're going to one. They're going to ruin all your expensive liquor. You're they're going to waste it and not drink it. Yep. They're going to make cocktails, but most people suck at making cocktails. They're going to make cocktails that aren't that good, and then they're going to leave them out and not drink them, and then they're going to make another cocktail that sucks. Uh, if you're going to have booze at your party, either pick a few trusted friends or yourself, and they make everyone's drinks, or leave out the things to make a few drinks, like a very limited set, like a limited set of tools, and put a piece of paper that's laminated next to it that says, here are the exact recipes to make these two cocktails. Another thing you can do is, in, you know, you can basically lock or hide the cabinet of, you know, equipment. Yep. And make, you know, get like your 10 martini glasses and make 10 whatevers. Yep. Right? Make them in bulk. And like, then it's like, or like you do champagne, right? You don't give someone the champagne bottle and like, go nuts, right? You pour a bunch of champagnes. Yep. And you give everyone want a glass now those same rules can apply to regular non-alcoholic beverages like if you've got fancy juices you're gonna make stuff be like all right it's time for drinks who wants a glass of like iced cranberry something and then everyone who says it you just make like 10 of them all in a row mm -hmm. don't let people make their own stuff it's okay if it's in cans or bottles but as soon as they're pouring they're gonna leave half drunk garbage all over the place and they're gonna mix monstrosities that they themselves won't drink i think this is at least part of the reason why, like, you know, Japanese people, they always pour the sake for the other person. You can't pour your own. Yep. Well, that yeah. also means that if you're getting drunk, it's harder to pour your own. <laughs> like, you gotta get, you gotta at least that's get someone I else. think that's the number one reason. I'm like, just saying this is a one of the reasons. Yep. You, if you, if you want to get drunk in that situation, like, if you're that kind of person, you at least need to find someone else who themselves wants to get drunk and is willing to enable you. Yeah. It raises the bar of getting drunk. In terms of drinking and drunk people... There's going to be some of your friends that are going to drink too much alcohol and be dumb. Don't be friends with them. Yep. Uh, pretty much. Like the, if, if they have a problem, let them know. Yeah. Like, don't let your friends get stupid drunk at parties reliably. And definitely like, don't let them drive anywhere. Nope. But, like, if there's a friend of yours who gets way too drunk at parties on a regular basis. If they're going to bargle? Like, well, like, they obviously get too drunk to where they can't really interact with oh, like every anymore. party? Yeah. Yeah. Don't, Talk to them. Like, yeah. that's, that's intervention time. It's one thing if someone gets too drunk at one party. But if they're too drunk at three parties in a row, like, I'm not even joking, like, Figure out a way to deal that's with that. Just, that's life problems, not party problems. Yep, but parties are the best way for you to see that happening. Because if you are hosting a party, you cannot get that drunk. Because you're responsible for the party. Mm. So you will have that. Like, even if, like, in our group, luckily, a lot of people don't drink. So we have a good mix of, you know, Scott, who has no alcohol in him, me, who has a little, all the way out to certain unnamed people who have a lot of alcohol in them. But... At typical parties, everyone's pretty drunk, which kind of sucks. That's it's hard bad because then no, if as there's trouble, no one can do anything about it. But if you're hosting a party, you need to be not drunk so that one, you can you know make the party happen. Man, if the cops show up and every single person is drunk, who's gonna be the reasonable person to talk to them? Nobody. Yep. Right? You're all just gonna go to the slammer. You can't arrest <laughs> us all. You can't arrest <laughs> us all. And you're not gonna even remember. You're gonna wake up in the slammer and be like, "Fuck." Yep. But even if you're like our group. If you're hosting the party, you're responsible for everyone's happiness, and you're sort of like going around, like doting at, like making sure things go. Like you, f you go over to like the group of people who are just poking at their phones, and like, hey, what are you guys up to? Why don't you go play a board game with Scott over there? He's setting up a Seven Wonders right now. Mm -hmm. Like facilitate all that. But as a result, you're very well placed to spot people who might be having problems, like someone who's got some anxiety, someone who is obviously like not having a good time, obviously because of other issues going on in their life. And even Why did they come to this party? Well, it's probably good that they at least came to the party. But May maybe, depending. The host is in a unique situation to see that shit. The problem is I could give way better advice about that. The host also is the only person who hopefully knows everyone at the party. Yep. Someone who's a guest might not know all the other guests and yep. would not be looking at those guests that they don't know. They're like they're only hanging with the people that are in their crew. And open invite friends of friends parties, that's a whole different ball game that we're not talking about tonight. Yeah. That's a whole nother world. Mm. What else do you got to say? Nothing? I want to go eat. Not really. I'm so I mean, hungry right pretty now. much uh, one of the most important things other than everything we talked about is just that. Just make sure that everyone's having a good time or at least had the opportunity Why to. Why are you even having a party if people aren't having a good time? Yep. Except most parties just peter out into everyone sitting around poking at their phones. A few people, Rim and Scott are in the corner with a few other people playing a board game ignoring everyone. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
This has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music, Cat Lee for web design, and Brando K for the logos. Be sure to visit our website at frontrowcrew.com for show notes, discussion, news, and more. Remember, Geek Nights is not one, but four different shows. SciTech Mondays, Gaming Tuesdays, Anime Comic Wednesdays, and Indiscriminate Thursdays. Geek Nights is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Geek Nights is recorded live with no studio and no audience. But unlike those other late shows, it's actually recorded at night. The patrons for this episode of Geek Nights, in order of the amount of money they give us on a continuing basis, are... Alan Joyce, Rebecca Dunn, Nicholas Brando, Heidi McNichol, Amanda Duchette, James David White, Christian Kuntz, MySteady.com, Sean Hayworth, William Eisenrose, Jeremy Miner, Chris Reimer, and Thomas Hahn. Iggy Kidd, Matthew Smith, Kajar Tavish, and Joshua Jerstar, Tyler Eller, Don Schleich, Sean Yeager, Clinton Walton, Run from New Zealand, Robert Lee, Ryan Perrin, Drew Openlander, Rare Laval, Brian Cedroni, Rochelle Montanota, Finn Eric Silverod, Chris Reimer, and Thomas Hahn. Aaron Cerise, Chris Midkiff, Chris Knox, Flame Darkfire, Sam Cordery, Daniel Redmond, Chris Haddad, Sean Klein, Chris Reimer, and Thomas Hahn. <laughs> <laughs> I just I cannot I clap to you those of you who coordinated that nonsense um yeah Kineticon's coming up I'm almost done remastering the third beta episode of Geek Nights uh we'll catch up on the Q&A's soon and by the end of the weekend I should have Utana episode 15 up as well I know that's been a long time coming but stuff keeps getting in the way uh stay tuned after Kineticon hopefully we'll announce our PAX Prime panel schedule and I'll at least be at PAX Dev. I don't know if Scott will. And vague thoughts. We might be able to make it to PAX Australia. We're not sure yet. If you really want us to be at PAX Australia, contact PAX Australia and be like, hey, are the Geek Nights guys coming back? Like, really? Are they? Can you ask them? Like, get them to come back. That'll really help us come back. But I'm looking into coming back. And now I leave you with something else. We odd. demand more! More asbestos, more asbestos, more asbestos.